Let's bring in our first guest of the evening. In early December, uh, he said a Santa Claus rally was coming to Wall Street. Listen. So how strong is this Santa Claus rally going to be, you think? Well, I, I, I think we could probably get 7% out of it. 7% mm. from wow. here? Where we are oh, right over, now, yeah. you, you mean in the next month? It's a month? big bag of goodies. From, yeah. from here to the end of the year. Yeah, I think we could. Well, Santa Claus's sleigh must have had issues because he really never made it here. <laughs> the S&P is down 10% since that call. So we brought him back. John Stolfitz is Oppenheimer's chief investment strategist. I guess you could say in the last four days we've had a nice little rally. Bag of goodies. Well, I, I, Almost I'd say we, we, like we, we've at least had some wrapped chocolates, you know. Yes. But uh, I've got to say the operative word there was think. I think, think that it could do that. It was a powerful rally we'd had th that very day or the day before, as I recall, after we'd, we'd seen so much, uh, uh, so much downside. But we've got to say it, what really impressed us the most in this, uh, this last year was the first nine months were really very good. We had a challenge in the first quarter. Market got over it, showed resilience. All the way until the end of the third quarter, we had record highs in the NASDAQ, S&P 500, the S&P 400, the mids, the S&P 600, the Russell 2000s. You had smalls. It, at, at, it was across the board. And then all of a sudden, people started worrying about what happens to growth? What if China doesn't work out? There's, uh, uh, what about Jerome Powell? And, and, and you so had, that was, all that stuff was what made December the worst December I since, believe what, so. 1931? Yeah, and, like that. And, and within context, too, I mean, when you look at it, when you consider the S&P is only off 6.6% here today. Now? I think it is. Right. I, I think so we're you right. Oh, bullish at this point. I, 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 absolutely. I think right now what, what, what I just heard uh, Pete Najeri was saying. And actually drop some, well, some, some presents he, our way. He might very well. You know, we might have some kind of a, a, a pleasant surprise in here. And, but we do believe there's progress being made in China. The Fed is, is decidedly uh, trying, at least, to, to be more communicative. Guy, Guy says he sees more churn, right? I do. A possibility and, and for I'll more churn. You, you see mean, that? Is it as simple as, for the last eight years, Sarah Eisen pointed this out on the show prior to this, you've had central banks' balance sheets expanding. Mm -hmm. Now, over the last six months, effectively, you've had central banks' balance sheets globally contracting, led by our Fed. Is it just that simple that you just stay with central banks' balance sheets and that's what's driving this market? I, I, I think what the thing is we're, we're, we're seeing the central banks normalize and the process of normalization based on where rates are from a nominal basis, money is still very cheap and the process of normalization is, is very, very sensitive to both weaknesses, at, at both vulnerabilities and strengths in these economies. And as a result of that, I think most of what we had in, in, this, in this fourth quarter, which was, was very painful, I mean, in terms of what you had talked to a lot of people, keep them off the ledge, so to speak, you know, as we'd say in the industry, don't want to have folks at home think it was that way, because it wasn't, but it, it, it's, people were very nervous. But the reality was it, was it was algorithmic trading, it was opportunistic investors finding an opportunity to justify selling. And taking profits. It was a catalyst. Let me bring in Pete for a question out in Minneapolis. Go ahead, Pete. Sure. Thanks, Tyler. Yeah, John, I had a quick question for you. So you agree you agree with the idea of the algorithmic trading and just the absolute mass of what we're seeing in terms of these moves has been unbelievable, right? I mean, to the upside you, and Pete. the downside, some of these moves are they're crazy. But has that created now the opportunity that I think we're seeing? Are there opportunities? I'm not just talking financials. I'm looking across the board. There was S&P stocks that have been absolutely punished with PEs that now, even if they don't grow, are in the single digits. Do you see that kind of opportunity? Opportunity, and are there certain sectors where you see more of it than other places? I, I have to agree with you, Pete. And, and what I the sectors that I like the best remain technology. I think technology had, had, had experienced a, a fairly brutal sell-off, considering it was up as high as 17 percent on a year-to-date basis uh, by the end of the of the third quarter. Uh, gave back most of those gains. Uh, the thought of it uh, here would also be industrials, the new technology, in essence, uh, technology, when I got into the business 35 years ago, was all was brass and a lot of glass and dials. Today, it's all sensors. Uh, the upgrade that mm -hmm. can occur to industrials, consumer discretionary, more people working, people are feeling more, uh, uh, having more confidence as to uh, will they retain their jobs. M wages are rising modestly. So, look, we're, we're wrong on this desk all the time, but, I, you know, there's a lot of strategists that have changed their tune in the last yeah. couple of months and have made adjustments. And, by the way, yeah. you could make an argument that the trade snafu, war, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call this dust-up, 
is enough to make a call. But if you if you did not have trade as a dynamic, don't you still think we could be in a dynamic where we could have slower growth, where S&P earnings priced up 7% in 2019 is very ambitious off of really difficult comps for companies that haven't been reinvesting in their business. And actually, right now, sentiment on business side is very negative, and that's a forward indicator. So I'm just trying to push back a little bit because we act like the market has moved for no reason, and now is a great opportunity to get in. It, it the, 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 the reality is it had plenty of reason to be concerned about the trade war and the implications this in 2019 for U.S. businesses if they have to find new supply chain uh, replacements for what they've been relying on for years if this becomes a protracted trade war, trade war which I don't think it will. But uh, in terms of the Fed, that's, that's very typical. The market never trusts a new right. Fed uh, chair until they've been in the, in, in the office about well, they four years. Test them. <laughs> they, they always test them. They always test them. It's always a yeah. brutal battle. Right. Uh, and, and the last is whenever oil drops precipitously like this, just think 2015 into 2016. So there was a bit of kabuki theater here. You know, the, 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 the masks were painted a certain color. I'm not saying that the concerns Guy weren't legitimate. Going tonight, actually. We're, we're going <laughs> to trade all this. Yeah, thank you very much. Good, Thanks, good, uh, good, good luck in uh, 2019. Happy New Year. Thanks, Happy New Year. Thanks. Fantastic. Good to see you. <laughs> Let's trade what we just talked about. Guy, t kick us I off. I want to be. Listen, I want to be optimistic. It's right. New Year's Eve. You look great. Everybody looks pizza in Minneapolis with a tuxedo. Everybody looks great. I just think it would be too cliche to think that last week marked the bottom. I think there's some hiccups in store early 19, and then we'll talk again in the spring. We'll see. I mean, I, I don't think we're going to have a, a bull market like we've had for the last six or seven years, but I think there's going to be tactical opportunities here. So you're going to have to change your style a bit. It's not going to be that buy it and just blindly hold it. You have to say, listen, when things are priced into the market, that's a time to strategically allocate to equities. Once we start going back up again and you get some of these things, some of these concerns again, don't be afraid to take stuff off. That's the markets that we're heading into, in my view.